Major breaking news this hour. House Democrats are opening up a new front in their investigation of President Trump, going after his very tightly guarded financial information. In a letter obtained exclusively by CNN, the House Ways and Means Committee chairman is demanding that the IRS commissioner hand over Mr. Trump's personal tax returns and some from his business over a six-year period from 2013 to 2018. I'll talk about this breaking story with a member of the Ways and Means Committee, Democratic Congressman Dan Kildee, and our correspondents and analysts are also standing by. First, let's go right to CNN Politics congressional reporter Lauren Fox. Lauren, uh, you're learning about this letter. Tell us more about the letter that, has, that you've obtained exclusively for CNN. Well, that's right, Wolf. Just minutes ago, the House Ways and Means Chairman Richard Neal sent a letter to the IRS Commissioner requesting President Donald Trump's personal and business tax returns. Obviously, this is a huge step that the committee chairman has been trying to consider for months now. He made that step today, making the official request to the IRS. Tonight, House Democrats drawing a new battle line with the president, sending this formal request to the IRS for President Donald Trump's tax returns, which he has for years refused to release. House Ways and Means Committee Chairman Richard Neal asking for six years of the president's personal tax returns from 2013 to 2018, as well as the tax returns of eight of his businesses, such as his golf course in Bedminster, New Jersey. During his campaign, Mr. Trump initially said he would release his tax returns as other candidates have, but later refused, blaming the fact they were under audit. Almost every lawyer says, you don't release your returns until the audit's complete. When the audit's complete, I'll do it. In the letter, Neal says the tax returns are needed to conduct oversight and so that Congress can consider legislation on how the IRS audits and enforces tax laws against sitting presidents. Right now, that process is laid out through IRS policy, but Neil writes that the committee needs to know how the process works and if it should be written into the law. The bombshell request follows months of debate and preparation among Democrats on the committee. It's also a case that is likely to make its way through courts over a period of time, so we have to make sure that we handle it prudently. Neil's request of the IRS will draw heat from Republicans. At a recent hearing, GOP committee members raised concerns about invasions of privacy if requesting tax returns from the IRS becomes the norm. Where does it end? What about the tax returns of the Speaker, members of Congress, or federal employees, or for that matter, any political donors? Now, now, Wolf, this is something that Richard Neal has been trying to consider very closely, in part because this is a chairman who wants to work with the Trump administration on other issues like infrastructure. He has brought a lot of attention to his relationships with the Trump administration. And I just want to read from a statement from Richard Neal. He said, quote, I take the authority to make this request very seriously, and I approach it with the utmost care and respect. This request is about policy, not politics. My preparations were made on my own track and timeline entirely independent of other activities in Congress and the administration. But obviously a gigantic step tonight, Wolf, from the House Ways and Means Chairman Richard Neal. Very dramatic step indeed. Very important uh, as well. Uh, great reporting, uh, Lauren Fox up on Capitol Hill. Thank you very, very much. Uh, let's get some more on the breaking story. Our White House correspondent, Abby Phillip, uh, is joining us. Abby, so what's your sense on how the White House, how the president is going to react to this letter. Well, Wolf, this is a major development on an issue that has dogged President Trump for years, and one that we know is a source of a sensitivity for the president. He once told the New York Times that if the Mueller investigation sought to dig into his personal finances, that would be a red line. Now it's clear that Congress is headed straight for that red line, and President Trump has already started to lay the groundwork for what this, what his response would be to that. He's already said this is presidential harassment, and even though Chair Chairman Neal is trying to say that this is about uh, this is about a policy and not politics, that this is not an attempt to go after President Trump for political reasons. You can expect the president and his allies to say the exact opposite, that Democrats are using their power uh, through these committees in Congress to go after him, to try to damage him politically. But of course, Wolf, uh, it's really not clear why President Trump has been so resistant to re 
releasing his tax returns, as virtually every other presidential candidate uh, has done for many, many years. The president has uh, has said that these taxes are under audit, uh, but there has not has not given any proof that that's actually the case. And, and this goes beyond just his personal taxes. We're talking about his businesses. We know that some of the testimony from uh, the president's associates, particularly his former personal attorney, Michael Cohen, have suggested that there are some nefarious things going on in the president's finances. Democrats are looking into all of that. Uh, and this is all part of what the president and his allies have been concerned about all along, that they could be digging into things that haven't been in the public sphere up until now. This could be fresh territory for the president's uh, adversaries, political adversaries. And it's been a source of concern for many, many months. We've reached out to the White House this afternoon in response to Lauren's great reporting. So far, we've heard we've not heard back from them yet, Wolf. Well, we know the president's uh, getting ready to make some sort of statement over there at the White House. Uh, there will be cameras and reporters there. We'll see if he's asked about this uh, and what his reaction is. Abby Phillip at the White House, thanks very much. Let's talk to a key member of the House Ways and Means Committee that's seeking President Trump's personal tax returns. Democratic Congressman Dan Kildee is joining us now from Capitol Hill. Uh, Congressman, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, so why, why are you, have you decided, your committee chairman, to take this extraordinary step now? Well, the president has broken nearly a half a century of custom where candidates for president and presidents of the United States have routinely furnished multiple years of their tax returns to the public in order to provide some assurance that their public uh, duties are not influenced by their private interests. But I think in this case specifically, the committee is looking at policy. We are looking at the extent to which uh, the IRS audits and enforces federal tax laws on the president. Uh, the, the routine process of auditing presidential tax returns is not a matter of law. It's a matter of practice at the IRS. So it's important for us as we examine this question to get our hands on these documents in order to make that assessment. Are and you, obviously yeah. there are very serious other public interests that would be served by having access. Uh, but principally this is about the policy question that the committee is uh, anxious to look at. Are you confident your committee has the authority to do this? There's no question that the committee has the authority. It's been exercised by the committee for many, many years in different circumstances. Obviously, in this case, since the president has broken from this uh, near 50-year tradition, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, being uh, exercised in the context of the president's returns. But there's no question. It is clear in the law that the chairman of the Ways and Means Committee has the authority to seek these from the IRS commissioner and that the IRS commissioner is bound by law to provide them. So we expect the IRS to comply. Because the chairman, uh, Richard Deal, the, uh, the chairman of your committee, the Ways and Means Committee, he writes in his letter, and we have a copy of the letter right here, he says he's basing this move off of IRS policy, not anything codified in formal federal tax laws. Do you have any concerns about that approach? Well, it, the approach is, it's not that he's asking uh, under, a, under IRS policy to provide the return. Uh, Section 6103 is clear. We have the authority to get these returns. I think what the chairman's reference to is that the IRS has had a practice of auditing presidential tax returns. It itself is not a matter of law. The committee is interested in that question to determine the extent to which uh, the IRS is auditing and enforcing t uh, federal tax law on the President of the United States. Because your Republican colleagues, uh, they're pushing back. Uh, they're saying that this is meant uh, to help Congress properly carry out the tax code, not, repeat, not to go after the tax returns of what they call political enemies. Uh, so here's the question. Are you abusing this code? No question we are not abusing this. This is specifically a tax policy question that the committee is pursuing. Obviously, there are other public interests that are served by the president revealing his tax returns, as, of course, he promised he would. But specifically, we have a policy interest in this question. We don't know the extent to which the IRS audits or is enforcing uh, tax law on the president. And we, as the committee of jurisdiction, have not only the right, but we have a, a responsibility to ensure that the law is being adhered to. And that's why we're seeking this through this inquiry. But there's no question that we have the authority to gain access to these returns. The chairman is one of the people designated in the law specifically with that authority. We expect the IRS commissioner to comply with the law and to provide those returns. As you know, for years, the president has maintained uh, he can't release his tax returns because they're still under federal audit by the IRS. Do you think that would prevent 
you from getting access to the returns if, in fact, an audit is still underway? It should not. Uh, there's nothing in the law that anticipates that a return that might be under audit is not subject to 6103. Uh, but in any event, we don't know whether the president's returns really are under audit. He says that. Uh, but, of course, as we know, the president says a lot of things. What are you hoping to learn uh, from the president's tax returns and from some of his business tax returns? Well, I think the business tax returns are important because in order to get a true picture of the president's financial interests and whether or not the IRS is properly auditing and enforcing the law upon those entities, we have to look at the larger picture. We can't simply only look at the individual return and get an understanding of the vast holdings that, uh, that Donald Trump has. Uh, those could very well be revealed, and we think most likely will be, will be revealed by looking at not only the individual return, but those specific entities that really comprise uh, the, the business empire that Donald Trump continues to control.